the next step was taken that is called number 3 para public asset reconstruction public asset reconstruction or rehabilitation public asset rehabilitation agency para public asset rehabilitation agency para uh, this was a recommendation made by the 2017 economic survey report it was a recommendation made by the 2017 economic survey report that a private asset reconstruction company were failure it was not a success private asset reconstruction company was not a success it was a failure therefore the recommendation of the uh, economic survey committee report was that government should start under the public sector public sector reconstruction company instead of private instead of private public sector asset rehabilitation agency should be established as the private sector was not efficiently working and their work was not satisfactory the economic survey report of 2017 made a recommendation that government should start under the public sector government should start asset rehabilitation agency instead of the private and that was accepted and government uh, mm, have taken steps to start the public sector asset rehabilitation company another step taken then number four a fourth method is SDR SDR another policy SDR usually SDR in the international economics is a full form special drawing right and SDR in the international economics it is uh, explained as a special drawing right but here in this respect it is not special drawing right but it is known as strategic debt restructuring strategic debt DBT debt restructuring but here SDR program means strategic restructuring on debt restructuring strategic debt restructuring policy that was another policy suggested by the reserve bank of india sdr that means uh, converting converting the assets of the uh, companies public sector company at least 51 percentage of the asset of the company uh, backing equities issue equities and borrow money from the capital market borrow money from the capital market keeping this asset at least 51 percentage of the asset can be kept as a backing and issue equities and borrow money SDR strategic debt restructuring policy another solution then that is SDR strategic debt restructuring in this case what is permitted the permission is that the 51 percentage of the uh, assets can be backed and issued uh, we may say equities promissory notes that is uh, a, a bond just like a bond borrow money keeping the bad asset 51 percent as a backing 51 percentage of the bad asset can be kept as a backing and borrow money issuing equities that is a kind of bond borrow money backing the bad asset a permission allowed by SDR then next number five it was asked question for the um, central that is a <coughs> last uh, 2018 2018 it was asked yes for a just uh, expansion is what is asked yes for a it is written as yes for a yes for a a scheme 
that is introduced by the Reserve Bank of India to minimize the policy, that will minimize the bad asset of a commercial bank. The policy introduced is known as S4A. Here, four S's are there. There are four S's in the expansion. In the expansion of this S4A scheme, four S's are there. That is why it is written as S4. Add one A. And the expansion of S4A is that scheme for, first is S, scheme for sustainable, second S, sustainable structuring, third S, structuring of stressed, fourth, stressed asset. Scheme for sustainable structuring of stressed asset. All the four S's are there and so it is written as S4. S4A asset. A scheme for sustainable, sustainable structuring of a stressed asset program S4A scheme. And according to the S4A scheme, the bank is permitted by the, the public sector commercial bank. The public sector commercial bank is permitted by the reserve bank to appoint a financial expert from private sector. In the private sector, there are many financial experts. Appointment of a private person, a financial expert from the private sector may be appointed by the public sector commercial bank. Uh, they may have their own programs and they are supposed to be financial experts. They will rearrange. They will give some solution for reducing or minimizing the bad assets. To reduce or to minimize the bad asset according to their expectation and their practical know-how and their expertise, some recommendation they can make. And in order to get some uh, financial expert recommendation for reducing the bad asset, permission was allowed by the RBI to public sector commercial bank to appoint. Appoint from the private sector a financial expert for the purpose of restructuring. Restructuring the bad asset into a sustainable form. A scheme for sustainable structuring of the stressed asset. Stressed asset here means bad asset. Stressed asset or the bad asset uh, can be restructured according to the opinion received from the financial expert. A permission according to the S4A scheme permitted. Then, next one, Surface Act. Surface Act. S A R F A E S I. Surface Act. Surface Act. Very popular. An act passed by the parliament. Surface Act. Surface Act was passed by the parliament in the year 2002. Surface Act of 2002. Uh, what is meant by surface? Expansion of that word surface is the securitization and reconstruction. Securitization and a and reconstruction are reconstruction of financial asset FA. Financial asset. Financial asset and empowerment of empowerment e empowerment of security interest act 2002 expansion and surface e expansion is the securitization and the reconstruction of financial assets and empowerment of security interest act 2002 it is a legislation act it is a legislation passed by the parliament permitting the reserve bank and commercial bank and other uh, agencies including government to take steps for reducing the uh, bad asset problem of the public sector bank. 
all these programs earlier programs started by the reserve bank of india and the government policies to reduce the bad assets of a public sector commercial bank became possible because of what reason basically it was surface e act of 2002 taking the provisions because surface e act permitted or allowed many autonomy decision making power to rbi and other institutions including government to take steps as it cannot be allowed to grow in large uh, message amount the steps are very essential otherwise the public sector commercial bank as a whole will suffer a lot but in order to get a solution whatever method they want they can take because the surface e act 2002 is permitted of all these policy measures adopted by rbi on the one side or on government side we find became possible due to the surface e act of 2002 as it was a permission uh, granted we find surface e act of 2002 now these are all uh, some of the important Uh, programs and schemes that is adopted by the reserve bank of india rbi in solving the problem of uh, bad assets any <clears throat> few more terms and concept that is what we are dealing now next one is with regard to the banking activities and banking structure also we have new terms familiar one such a term is core banking core banking one such a term is what is called the core banking scheme core bank what do you mean by core banking a network of bank branches are connected through uh, we may say uh, online computer then through the computer application or a network of uh, computer programming the branches of all commercial banks are interconnected interrelated so that the method is what is known as the core banking system introduced after 1991 especially uh, when the online trading or online transaction and computerized program became very popular in india we could connect all the branches of a commercial bank through internet programming so that what happens what uh, benefit is that customers we customers need not go to our own commercial bank where our account is maintained for doing any kind of transaction any branch you can approach to any branch of the commercial bank you can deposit into your account you can withdraw money from your account from any part of the indian economy any branch the transaction became possible prior to the introduction of the core banking scheme you know your physical presence was necessary in the com- particular commercial bank where you maintain the account if i have that account in sba in trivandrum branch i have personally to go and deposit in the uh, account maintained with the branch and to withdraw money also i have to go uh, the concerned branch and get withdrawal but at the very same time after the introduction of the core banking scheme we find uh customers find very easy to withdraw money from any of the branches though your deposit is one of the branches in trivandrum you can withdraw the money from the concerned bank branch in new delhi or any other place no boundary limitation is there similarly if i deposit an amount in my account maintained in trivandrum branch in new delhi branch in new delhi branch if i am depositing automatically that amount will be credited in my account maintained in trivandrum city such a capability such a facility became possible all over transaction very easy because of the introduction of the core banking scheme that is a network of branches of a particular commercial banks are interconnected through the network of online 
transaction. Through the computer application, the branches of all the commercial banks are uh, interconnected so that you can do the transaction, banking transaction uh, through any branch without appearing before the concerned branch where you maintain the account. It is possible. And such a system introduced is known as the core banking scheme. Universal banking, another is what is called the universal banking. Now, universal banking means nowadays the commercial banks are doing not only the traditional work of acceptance of deposit and lending of loan. Along with this uh, traditional acceptance and lending of loan, a commercial bank is doing a variety of functions. They are even today doing transactions in the capital market also. Investment banking also they are doing. They are doing investment banking. They are doing mutual banking services. They are having uh, say, uh, many other type of work of investment banks they are doing. Alangil, they are also doing transaction with regard to pension product. You can also receive your pension, government pensions uh, from not only the treasury, from the commercial bank you can. From the commercial bank you can uh, get the monthly pension allowed by the government. You need not go to the treasury concern. Pension product services provided by the commercial bank. Mutual fund uh, product uh, facilities allowed by the uh, commercial bank. Investment function, investment banking function is also done by the commercial bank today. That means commercial banks strictly not at all doing the uh, functions within the money market, traditional functions of uh, acceptance and uh, uh, payment. That is lost as a function of the commercial bank, they are extending. They are extending the functions to investment bank, along with mutual bank functioning, pension product doing, development are uh, type of different, different policy measures they are uh, doing and such a bank doing a variety of functions is what is known as the universal bank. A bank doing all type of activities without any restriction, especially without restricting with the traditional banking function. Deviating from the traditional banking function, doing a variety of functions, both in the money market as well as the capital market. They are doing their transaction, which is now known as universal banking. Next up, narrow banking. narrow banking narrow banking that is this principle is allowed especially in case of the public sector commercial bank RBI is of opinion that public sector commercial bank cannot compete with the private commercial bank for example private commercial bank especially the new generation second generation uh, private commercial banks are very big in size uh, ICICI bank suppose uh, or Axis bank HDFC they are very big in size they can involve in all type of activity they can undertake risky type of activity since large scale business they are they have branches in the international market also And so, in such a situation, a private sector commercial bank can involve, can enter into risky type of activity, they can withstand the risk, they are not worried about that, they are physical or may say the financial uh, condition is strong, better. With such a private commercial bank, public sector commercial bank cannot do any competition. Public sector commercial banks are prohibited by the Reserve Bank to enter into risky type of activities. If a public sector commercial bank is entering into a risky type of activity, it is known as casino banking. Casino banking. 
അപ്പൊ കസിനോ ബാങ്കിങ് റെഫേഴ്സ് ടു എ റിസ്കി ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ബാങ്കിങ് ആക്ടിവിറ്റി അണ്ടർ ടേക്കൺ ബൈ എ കമേഴ്ഷ്യൽ ബാങ്ക് ഇത് കമേഴ്ഷ്യൽ ബാങ്ക് ഈസ് എ പർപ്പസ്ഫുള്ളി എൻ്ററിങ് ഇൻ ടു എ റിസ്കി ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ആക്ടിവിറ്റി ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് നോൺ ആസ് എ കസിനോ ബാങ്കിങ് ബിസിനസ് but rbi is instructing the public sector commercial bank not to involve in casino banking not to involve in casino banking to compete with the private banks to compete with the private banks don't undertake casino banking riskless banking transaction any riskless banking transaction that is the policy suggested by the rbi to public sector commercial bank because they cannot withstand public sector commercial bank cannot withstand such a risky situation so avoid avoid such a risky situation and do what do a narrow banking business do a narrow banking business by restricting their uh, risky activity involved risk less for example they should invest only in government securities they should invest only in government securities because government security is the most riskless security there is no risk is involved surety certainty and uh, uh, marketability everything is involved in the government bond government security trade and deal only with the government security thereby reducing the risk involved in the banking activity not to go with the casino banking but go with a narrow banking riskless narrow banking riskless banking that is the objective of public sector commercial bank as directed by the reserve bank of india in the present context that is what is known as narrow banking 